Entry 6, and this one is dated Thursday, February 27th, and Friday, February 28th, 1964, and this is two pages. Do uh, you want to just give us a sense of what's important here, and then we'll talk about it? Well, it, in this entry, I uh, report that uh, the business manager did, in fact, appear as a witness before the uh, 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 commission uh, on uh, February 27th. He was questioned by uh, Norman Redlick, uh, but under the admonition from the Chief Justice not to uh, uh, explore uh, personal uh, uh, matters of a kind we referred to a short time uh, ago. Uh, and then it also uh, reports that a, a, a photograph of Lee Harvey Oswald in the backyard holding a rifle had, had, been, had been published uh, in, in the Life, Life magazine. Uh, and that it was uh, described as a, a leak from the commission by uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Martin, although there were other suggestions that that was not that was not not the case. But the most important uh, item in, in this uh, uh, entry is that we have for the first time uh, indication that members of Congress uh, uh, are challenging uh, Mr. the commission's employment of, of Norman Redlick. And some of the uh, uh, more conservative members in the Congress, uh, uh, sort of as a legacy to the uh, 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 the Committee on Un-American Activities that achieved a lot of notoriety during the 1950s, but had been thought by many to have uh, be uh, eliminated uh, uh, from congressional uh, stature. Uh, these members have suggested that uh, Norman had had uh, relationships uh, and allegiances uh, during the 1950s of a kind uh, that should have barred him from employment. And specifically, they referred to an organization uh, uh, which did uh, uh, publicly uh, state its opposition to the activities of the Commission on Un-American Activities in, in the uh, House of Representatives that had uh, uh, received such you know publicity and had urged very strongly that the public uh, agencies in the federal government were filled with uh, a communist uh, uh, or persons uh, attending in that, in that direction. So Norman's uh, participation in a, in a, a group uh, criticizing the House committee and also in a group that was taking on a, a death penalty cases on a pro bono basis. Norman apparently got very interested in the 50s in death penalty cases and the fact that so many people suffering uh, from a, a death penalty uh, 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 potential uh, had not been well represented. And so there were uh, lawyers like Norman and others who uh, uh, took on such cases on a pro bono basis to explore fully uh, the uh, transcripts and evidence against uh, this particular uh, uh, inmate in an effort to see whether any basis for seeking uh, a review uh, of that uh, uh, judgment of the court. So in, in both respects, he was obviously a, a liberal by political allegiances. And it was troublesome to Rankin uh, because he had not known about these aspects of Norman's history, I think, uh, uh, because there was no reason for them really to be discussed uh, as they became acquainted in the early 1960s. And he didn't quite know what to do. And uh, uh, he and I discussed it, and uh, uh, I suggested that, as he recognized, that Norman was, uh, you know, absolutely irreplaceable, uh, a member of, of the team at this point, and and uh, I and Rankin thought maybe he should take some action of a tentative nature now in view of these complaints, and I uh, argued that he should not do anything further or consider the matter until he had the full FBI report available to him. And he agreed with that uh, uh, resolution of the matter, and so it was not the subject of further discussion until, I believe, in May sometime, when the FBI report was presented to the commission, and the commission had to debate the future of Norman Redlick. Uh, and I have some entries, I think, dealing with that later in the journal. It's uh, even with that context, which is very good to have, it's almost inconceivable today. I mean, to, for young people to imagine that his liberal affiliations from years earlier would in any way prejudice or impact his work with the commission. But it was a time and a place, and McCarthyism, I suppose, there was still a, a, a thread of that running through Congress at that time. Well, just as a sort of irrelevant comment on that, today we're full of 
uh, people being uh, uh, criticized uh, severely for uh, things that they did or said uh, yeah, I guess uh, years, if not decades ago. <laughs> <laughs> the names change, but I guess the prejudice uh, remains in place after all this time. Um, in the third paragraph, it, you mentioned that Mark Lane is invited to testify before the commission. We talked about Mark Lane a few minutes ago. Um, something that's interesting, uh, you mentioned to me in, in, as we prepared for this that he was funded in part by the Soviet Union, and there's a whole separate story there about the Soviets kind of pushing alleged right-wing involvement in the assassination um, in an effort to kind of just stir things up and uh, make the work of the commission even harder. Do you want to comment on that at all? Uh, well, you've stated the objective very well. Uh, we, we learned uh, in, in March or, or April of, of 1964 from the CIA that they, they had documented the uh, uh, persistent and well-funded efforts by uh, the Soviet Union to place the responsibility for the assassination on persons other than Oswald and to maintain that the the commission and the Dallas Police Department were protecting the real assassin and Oswald was a patsy who was uh, killed uh, by uh, an agency representing the far-right interest in the United States. And the CIA was able to document how uh, a communist the newspapers in, in Italy and uh, France, uh, if not communist left-leaning, uh, were, were buying into uh, these uh, theories. And in fact, they funded the, uh, the, G, uh, the Guardian, National Guardian uh, magazine in which uh, uh, Lane published. And there is subsequent information that Lane was uh, uh, financed in part, if not in whole, by the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. which does you know, call into question you know, his uh, integrity. Uh, and, and maybe the stature that he holds in some segments of the research community. Uh, but we, Lane was being called uh, not because of his criticism, but because he said he had information and documents in his possession uh, that were relevant to the commission's investigation. The members of the commission wanted to hear from him directly and have him produce those documents, and that's why he was invited to appear. I do want to ask you about point number five, Philip Barson from the uh, IRS uh, doing uh, an exploration of Oswald's finances. Uh, tell us what that was about. Uh, this was a very interesting uh, proposal. I don't know where it came from, not from me, but someone said, you know, if, if he was a member of a conspiracy, uh, you know, he, he wasn't doing it pro bono. He was looking for some reward. Now, whether it was some important office uh, in the future world uh, organization or maybe it was just money. And so the thought was to try to uh, examine his expenses and income and expenses from the time he returned uh, uh, to the United States, I guess in about the middle of 1962, until the time of the assassination. And so these I IRS agents uh, uh, did conduct an investigation. They knew where he had worked. They knew how much he was paid. They had some sense of how much money he had in his pocket, I believe, when he landed back in the United States uh, back in 1962. And they were able to keep reasonable management uh, of his expenditures in terms of rent uh, and food. And I don't know exactly where they looked, but the two surprising facts emerged. First of all, his, his total income in that approximately 18 months uh, period uh, was under $4,000. And they found expenses that were within uh, uh, $200 of that income amount. So thereby negating the, the, the theory that he received money from any external source that might have been motivated by a conspiratorial uh, 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 plan. He, he had cash in his possession at the time of the assassination, most of which he left uh, uh, with his, his wife, um, but it balanced out to be uh, uh, such an overwhelmingly precise uh, determination that later on, Jim Liebler said, it's so precise that it's unbelievable. And, and on that particular issue, I took the contrary view that this was particularly the case where, uh, you know, uh, that degree of precision uh, was needed to really make the investigation of, of importance. In any event, it was reported and people took it for what it was, but uh, I, I thought it did close off one line of uh, conspiratorial thinking that w was important. This is your last entry for the month of February, and so as we move into March now, it's worth noting that here in February, this is when the single bullet theory begins to first take shape. 
Yes, and the, the, the team was beginning to work deeply on, on this in, in February. Um, I, I was aware of what was going on, and I heard from Norman and, and, and others. Uh, uh, but you know the uncertainty was so where, where do we go from here? The primary emphasis at this point was to get people to, uh, before the commission and, and get the authority to take depositions. But the the group of lawyers working on this, meanwhile, were doing things like require asking for uh, more pictures uh, uh, about the uh, position uh, of the two men in the car, getting that support from the Secret Service. Uh, they were looking for more information about the nature of the wounds and the world, the wound examinations that were underway by agency of the, of the Department of the Army, I believe. And so they were doing things not in com mentioned in, in my uh, the journal because I probably wasn't aware of them at the time, but they were doing the things that thoughtful people were trying to do to to get the uh, information available on which they could begin to make judgments. And that included, again, repeated uh, review of the, uh, uh, of the uh, Zapruder film. And I think they went out at some point to get different prints of the film because some prints were more, were earlier in, in the, uh, the, the lineage, of the lineage of, of the Zapruder film. And there were minor differences that could be detected. Uh, in, in any event, that was a, a matter that gradually loomed to greater importance in March and April. All right.